this is Matt with Option Omega. Thanks for watching our video. Today, we're going to be looking at everything related to position sizing, margin, and contracts on Option Omega and how the back tester calculates them and how you can better understand them to set up the back tests in the way that make the most sense for you. So the first thing we're doing is we're starting actually on our documentation website. The URL for this is optionomegadocs.com. And this website, if you click on creating a back test, it has everything in the back test section, in the creation section, has a header here that you can go to. So since we're looking at the components of the back test related to margin, if you just go down here to starting funds, the start of that section, you will see explanations of just about everything I'm going to talk about in the video, if you prefer it to be written out and read rather than listened to. But we're going to cover everything in the video as well. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the starting funds. And this, along with margin allocation per trade, is probably the two most important things in sizing your back tests. So starting funds is fairly self-explanatory. It's just the amount that you want to put in in the simulation in the back test to begin your back testing journey. As the test goes through gains and losses, this will change obviously, but this starting funds and the margin allocation per trade are the two most important things that will influence the way that the margin and the money gets simulated in the back test. So the margin allocation per trade is also fairly straightforward. It's just the percentage of the account that you want to have on in the back test. So you can do this as a small fraction. You can do it as 0.5% all the way up to 100%. So if we look at the back tester in this funds and allocation section that we were just looking at in the documentation, only two fields that you absolutely must include to begin your back testing journey are starting funds and margin allocation per trade. So those are the only two that you have to have. Again, this is just math. It's taking your funds times whatever percent you allocate to the trade. That's how it works. Now, we're going to take just a second to talk about a very important thing, which is reg T margin. Option Omega uses reg T margin for the calculations on how many contracts to put on in the back tester. And it's very, very important to note that there's not consistency on all trade types between the brokers and live trading. If you put on a double calendar in E-Trade or Tasty or IB or a naked SPX short or naked SPX long in those brokers, you may see, you will see different margin requirements among them. A couple other notes. If you're looking at a portfolio, which is a little more advanced and we won't go deep into it in this video, the tester is not going to look at margin across the portfolio. If you have different tests that offset each other, the tester is not going to take that into consideration. Additionally, when you're using leg groups, the tester will not check for margin requirements if you happen to exit one of the leg groups, the long leg or spread before the short leg, it will not look at margin requirements. It will just execute the back test. So if we jump back over to the back tester, we'll get an easy real life example. Let's do a simple one that the math will be fairly easy. So we're just going to do a $5 zero DTE call. We're not going to close it. Let's allocate 10%. So the math, again, will be pretty simple. I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. I'll put on a few opening fees just because it's always good to have some fees on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go look at this back test, which, by the way, is terrible. That's not the point. We're trying to show the feature here. And this worked out to be a great example. OK, here we go. So the first time you put on the test, you put on about 10K, which was 10 percent. You lost it all the next time. You put on about 9K, you lost it all. The next time you put on about 8K. So you can easily see here as the portfolio, your, your capital shrinks, you're allocating less and less to the back test. What happens is this is actually a pretty good example here. You can see the dip. And then at some point we had a huge win. So let's go find that one. Here it is. So you had a couple days of just doing pretty poorly. Then you have a big win. And you can see the portfolio allocation, this 10% here that we're allocating, is dynamically changing. So we're putting on more or less as the portfolio goes up 
and down. So that is a very simple illustration of how it works. And you can easily see that in here. You can see by the end of it, our P&Ls are smaller than they were at the beginning just because we're ending with a lot lower money. So if you look at the end, it's about 10%. You can see very clearly that the back test is simulating that 10% each time. So again, the first thing to know is that we use reg T margin and the two fields that are most important are your starting fund fields and your margin allocation field. So the next thing that we're going to look at again in this section is pretty straightforward. It's the max open trades. So what we're going to do, let's take this allocation down to 2% so we get a longer back test and we'll get more back tests. Even though we didn't run out, of, run out of money, we're gonna change a couple other parameters, so that might be important. So let's set this to five DTE, and we will take a look and see how that works. It's still gonna probably be pretty ugly, but again, we're gonna illustrate a point here. So, actually this, uh, <laughs> shock, shockingly, this did a little bit better. But what we're gonna look at here is we're gonna look at how the back test will put on a trade here. So we're putting on this trade five days. Now I have the exact DTE on, so it's not gonna put on trades that would end on Saturday or Sunday, okay? But here's the point, put these trades on. You might have several trades on at the same time. So what this does, let's just say you only wanna have two trades on. You can click two open trades and it will change the back test to where, let's go back to that original one. You can see on the original one, we had one going on Friday the 5th. Well, we didn't have that in this because we still had two trades open. So that's one way to do it. You can also click this prune oldest trades. Let's take a look and we'll see what this does. It's pretty self-explanatory. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. If we go back here, you'll see what happened is the trade will close. It will, it will tell you why it closed. So on Wednesday, again, using that same example, on the third, we usually open 5DT at 945. And what we did was we opened that trade. The back tester closed the trade that was open and actually got a little bit of money. And <laughs> stupidly, this actually... This actually isn't the worst strategy in the world. Um, dumb example, sometimes they work out. So that is pretty self-explanatory because the trade log will tell you that the trade got pruned, okay? So the other thing you can do is this is where we get into a little bit more real life examples. You can cap the contracts per trade, okay? So Let's do that and we'll show exactly what it does. So right now, what we're doing about a $5 call using 2% of the option on 100K. So you're starting out gonna be about four contracts. And as we go, yeah, four contracts, three contracts, four contracts there. Perfect. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cap this at two contracts. So as you can see, it's capping that at two contracts every single time. Now that field cap contracts has some pluses and some minuses. If you use it, the back test will use that as the final limiting size for how many contracts you're trading, right? If we change that to one, it's only ever going to do one. And I'll show you that right here. There it is. It's only ever doing one. Okay. And that may be how some people trade in real life. Perhaps they're trading based on an income. They have a set, a set nest egg or portfolio that they're using and they trade based on a certain number of contracts on a certain number of strategies. That is a use case and that's one of the reasons why this is in the back tester. If you uncap the contracts though, you will probably have bigger drawdown you might have more money, but you'll definitely have bigger drawdowns. So be aware if you use contract cap that it can mask, sometimes artificially mask, if you're not using them in real life, it can artificially mask your drawdowns. So again, there are people who use it religiously. There are people who never use it. It's in there. 
you can use it if you want to. We're going to come back to this ignore margin requirements because that is probably the most advanced piece of this. And we're going to look at this other choice right here of max allocation amount per trade. And so right now, if you look at, we'll go back to the very beginning. If you look at it, we're buying four contracts at 470. So, you know, just under $2,000 is what we're doing that. So let's look at this last choice in the funds and allocation section, which is the max allocation amount per trade. Now, in Option Omega, when you're doing something like a profit target, a stop loss, slippage, etc., you have to remember that those are times 100 because you're dealing with option. This feature, max allocation amount per trade, was requested by the community. And this feature was based on the feedback that works like this. Hey, I don't ever want to put on more than $1,000 of risk on this trade or $1,200 of risk or $20,000 of risk or $100 of risk. So if we look at this first trade on January 3rd, we put on four contracts at four seventy dollars each. So that's about $2,000 of money. If we change that to, let's say, $1,100, this is going to function in, a, in the same result that max contracts per trade does in that it caps what you're putting on. It just goes about it in a different way. So as you can see, because we have a max allocation of $1,100 and the backtest results screen spells that out right there, you're only putting on two contracts. So again, that was a user feature that they said, hey, I want to tie this to a real life risk metric that I use where I don't want to lose more than a certain amount on a trade. That's what that does. The last thing we're going to look at is this ignore margin requirements right here. So this will by, by default, it will be turned off. If you put a contract per trade cap, it will be available for you to also check ignore margin requirements. And what this will do is exactly what it says. It will ignore the margin requirements. So there, again, this was a community feature. We think about it more as sandbox mode. So you're intentionally saying, hey, I don't even want to think about reg T. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to put this on. And that's what it does. It's probably for more advanced users who want to fully explore kind of the sandbox mode. So this will help you understand all of the different ways that you can manipulate, tweak, and customize the allocation of what you are back testing in Option Omega. Again, there's written resources on optionomegadocs.com. We have more videos on this. A lot of these are covered in Backtesting Bootcamp. If you're a new user, it's highly recommended. It's a free course on the Academy. And of course, any subscribers hopefully are at least on the Discord. And if you have questions, you can ask in the help questions section. So thank you. If you click like and subscribe with YouTube, that helps us. Have a great day.